I have with me today my colleague Joe Nye, one of the most foremost thinkers, I would say, the intersection of international relations uh, and national security and public policy. Uh, Joe, uh, you know, as you know, we recently, over the last few years, in, during your time as dean, you already had realized the power of the internet and uh, had a programs on internet and society. And over the last few years, the area of cybersecurity has become extremely important. And we at the Kennedy School have been uh, uh, in a joint program with MIT, uh, a, a program on exploring s cyber international relations and, and seeing the intersections of technology in, in, in this area. I would love to get your views why it is so important uh, to study cybersecurity, especially from the public policy point of view. Well, we're finding more and more issues of international security uh, are changing because of the cyber dimension. Uh, we've seen this in day-to-day uh, -day intrusions, but uh, you also see it in dramatic events such as the Stuxnet uh, uh, worm, which destroyed about a thousand Iranian centrifuges. You see it in uh, when the Russians invaded uh, Georgia. They accompanied it with a de distributed denial of services attack. Uh, in the Russians recently taking Crimea, they uh, were able to destroy Crimea's uh, communications system uh, in terms of their ability to communicate uh, command and control with uh, Kiev. So uh, in many security issues, we're seeing the increased role of cyber security. But in addition to that, uh, cyber is just becoming much more important to the economy as a whole. And disruptions of uh, cyber can have a very large economic uh, significance. So, in fact, for a whole aspects of infrastructure, it would be quite, quite important to understand this interface, I assume. If we were to lose a significant part of our infrastructure, uh, that would be very costly. Uh, if you look at the expenses that the banking and financial services industry goes through to try to protect its systems, that's a, a, a good example. Uh, but there are lots of other areas as well. And think Basically, it's very hard for any part of the economy now to escape some dependence on cyber. And once you depend on cyber, then you have a problem of insecurity. It's an area where offense dominates defense. Yeah. In another area where I think you probably especially would have an expertise, how important is it in the spread of demo democratic values and democratic institutions? Well, there is a division in now in terms of how you'll see governance of cyberspace. I mean, there are some countries, Russia and China, more authoritarian countries, which basically would like to see a governmental control through UN organizations like the International Telecommunications Union. Uh, the uh, liberal democratic countries, Europe, America, uh, Japan, so forth, have been stressing what they call a multi-stakeholder model in which you will have governments, but working with uh, private industries and working with the civil society in terms of setting the rules and norms for the governance of cyberspace. And that uh, div division uh, between the two sides is, comes up at many UN conferences and UN votes. The conference in Dubai at the end of 2012, the uh, what you might call the liberal democratic countries were outvoted about two to one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, we are, as you know, going to, uh, uh, doing various things, a lot of it because of the advice. You've been able to bring many of the leaders uh, in this space to the Kennedy School, to the seminars you organize. And as a result, we, we started a course at the Kennedy School for our ma master's in public policy. But more broadly, through these uh, interchanges, I've discovered that Public po training of public policy leaders at this intersection is very important. So we've got an executive education course coming this July and uh, aimed at people to understand bits of the technology and its international policy, to look at the emergent threats which might occur, and then uh, to develop uh, effectively case studies in this area. Are there things which you would like to see emphasized for the public policy, people who are in government and other executive positions, both in industry as well as in the, uh, in the public sector? Well, we're finding more and more of our regular master students are becoming interested in cyber and, and uh, their courses in this area are oversubscribed. 
Uh, what an executive education program offers is a chance for people who don't have the luxury of taking off a full year to try to cram uh, this intersection between policy and technology into a shorter period. Uh, so I think the exec ed programs are actually a good adjunct uh, supplement to the work that we're doing during the year. But what it amounts to is that people who are interested in public policy are going to have to pay more attention to the cyber dimensions of it. Thank you. That's And I do, uh, for uh, people who do not know, this particular program is going to be between the end of July and first week of August. And there are several of our colleagues at Harvard, Jonathan Zittrain, who has been a big player in internet governance, including working for, for the government on federal communications policy. Uh, we have uh, uh, Jack Goldsmith from the law school, Eric Rosenbach, who used to be at the Belfair Center, and of course, Harvard's chief technology officer and professor in the School of Engineering, Jim Waldo. So there are a fair number of people spanning the space of law, public policy, and of course yourself, who, who, who will, I think, give the concluding uh, talk at, at, the, at the executive education. So it should be a very exciting beginning for our, for actually the, the yeah, space. Yeah, and I would add uh, Melissa Hathaway, who yes. is the woman who basically uh, did President Bush's uh, cyber policy and then the first 90 days of President Obama's cyber policy. So in fact, it'll be good continuity all the way from yes. the Bush administration to, to the current administration. Right.